Welcome to part three of the four-part series on using the printed PRDH for your French-Canadian research. This is Sandra Goodwin from Maple Stars and Stripes, your French-Canadian genealogy podcast at maplestarsandstripes.com. If you have not yet viewed using the printed PRDH parts one and two, I'd suggest you do so before viewing this video as each video builds on the previous one. In part one, we compared the online version of the PRDH to these 47 printed volumes. We also explained how the volumes are grouped, which seems to be the main barrier to understanding and using this set of books. In part two, we learned the meanings of the abbreviations used in these volumes, as well as how to use the general index and the parish indexes to find the records you're looking for. In part three, we're going to learn how to read the three most common types of records used by French Canadian researchers baptism, marriage, and burial records. Okay, let's walk through the steps of how you would locate the record you are looking for in one of these volumes. Say you are looking for the baptism of your ancestor Marie Anne Paquet in a parish index. You have a general idea of when she was baptized, so you look up the surname Paquet in the index appropriate for the time period in which you are searching, and you find this entry. First, you have to determine if it could possibly be your Marianne Paquet. This index entry tells us that this Marianne is found in a baptism record for December 7, 1698. The number one with the symbol in front of it means that there will be more than one baptism entered on that date, and this is the second. Marianne is the person number one on the record, which means it is her baptism record. So you know that you have not found a record where Marianne is the mother. She is the person being baptized. Now you take that information and you search through the baptism records chronologically until you get to the year 1698. Then you go towards the end of that year until you find the records that were recorded on December 7th. You look at the first record for that date and you will see Marie Anne Paquet as the baptized child. At the end of the line with her name on it, you see three columns of letters, the letters C, P, and F. The C stands for the French word célibataire or single. Here you might also see the letter M for married, V for widowed, S for separated, or it could be left blank. In the second column you will see the letter P, which means the person was present at the event. A letter D here means that the person was deceased at the time of the event. In the last column you will see an M indicating males, F for females, or I for inconnu or unknown. The second and third lines are where you find the parents of the baptized child. In this case, the father is Pierre Paquet. The words époux de three means he is the husband of person number three, Marie Charlin. After her name are the words épouse de deux, two. This means she is the wife of person number two. Père and mère de one means father and mother of person number one. The last three letters tell us that both were married present at the baptism and obviously the father was male and the mother was female. The next two people in the number four and five spots are probably the godparents even though it's not stated. You would have to double check the original record. In this case it appears that the godfather is Pierre Paquet, most probably a relative with the same name as the father, and the godmother is most probably Marianne Laverne. Both were present at the baptism the last line is for the member of the clergy who performed the sacrament, in this case Francois Dupre. The letter R colon indicates the priest's residence. The CP stands for the French words set paroise or of this parish. The P colon curé means that his occupation is the parish priest for the parish listed at the top of the page. He is single, present at the event, and male. Now let's take a look at an index entry for a marriage record. If Etienne Paquet was your ancestor, this index entry would tell you that she was married July 2, 1691, and she is person two on the record. The first position in a marriage record is always the groom, the second is always the bride. 
We see the record here. These are the marriage records from the parish of Notre Dame de Quebec. In the second column, we see the marriage entry for Etienne et Paquet. On the top line, we see that she was married July 2nd, 1691, to Toussaint Unau. He was not from the parish of Notre Dame de Quebec. The O colon indicates we are about to learn of his origins, which happens to be Saint Vivien in Rouen, France. The next line under the groom's information has the letter S colon with the word non, which is French for no. What that's telling us is that the groom was not able to sign his name. Next comes the name of the bride, followed by an R colon CP, which tells us her residence was set paroise or of this parish, so she was from the parish of Notre Dame de Quebec. She also could not sign her name. Obviously, they were both single, both present, he was male, and she was female. The next four people mentioned are first the parents of the groom, indicated by Père, the father, and Mère, the mother, of person number one, followed by the parents of the bride, father and mother of person number two. The bride's parents reside in this parish, the parish of Notre Dame. The next four people mentioned in this record are witnesses or attendees of the marriage ceremony, again followed by the parish priest, Father Francois Dupre. Next we're going to take a look at the burial of Pierre Paquet. Notice there are two Pierre Paquets mentioned for this burial event, which takes place on August 13, 1697. But notice the 01 and 02 at the end of each line. The 01 means that that Pierre Paquet is the person being buried. Chances are it's a child, and the second Pierre Paquet would be his father. We look at the record and we see that that is correct. The child was two years old, deux ans, single, obviously deceased at the time of the event, and male. The second and third lines name the parents, just as in the baptism it tells you that Pierre, person number two, is the husband or a poux of person number three, Marie Charlon, and Marie Charlon is the wife or a poux of Pierre Paquet. It also states that they are the père and mère, or father and mother, of person number one. The extra piece of information, the P colon cordonnier, tells us the father's occupation or profession. In this case, he is a cordonnier or a shoemaker. This is where the key of the repertory that I mentioned in video one comes in very handy. Appendix one consists of two lists of occupations, one in French and a corresponding one in English. In French, Cordonnier is the first entry in group 30. If you move to the English section, group 30, you will see that a Cordonnier is a shoemaker. There had to be a witness to each burial, and in this case it was John Dubre, who was present and male. Father Dupre again officiated. He resided in this parish, the one mentioned at the top of the page. Well, these are the basics to using these volumes to research baptism, marriage, and burial records. You will occasionally come across different words not mentioned here, so a good French dictionary is always handy to have. But for the most part, each record is very similar to the others of its kind. If you'd like your own PDF copy of the Key to the Repertory, the English translation of the instructions for how to use the PRDH, don't forget to head over to maplestarsandstripes.com newsletter. Then you'll have no excuses whatever for not using the printed PRDH. To learn more about all three PRDH formats, go to my podcast and show notes for the PRDH episode at maplestarsandstripes.com 26. Now in part four, the last video in the series, we're going to look at how to read some of the lesser known records. Please join us for using the printed PRDH part four. Thank you.